the laser was first invented, there were some outlandish hopes for how it might be used. To melt dangerous icebergs, perhaps, or to vaporize the ink on typewriter errors. At first, these were impossible to accomplish. People began to ask, what was the laser for? But before the laser, there was the maser. Charles Towns pioneered this, amplifying microwaves by the stimulated emission of radiation. We already use masers in deep space communication and radio astronomy. But there's a problem with something called noise. Let's imagine an intrepid astronaut on Mars. She's 225 million kilometers from Earth and she just wants to call home, but there's no signal. She watches some Netflix, but it just keeps buffering. She has to check her work emails, but there's no Wi-Fi connection. When transmitting information, we are frequently faced with electromagnetic interference, background noise. The signal weakens over such large distances, and this results in a low signal-to-noise ratio. A high signal-to-noise ratio means one signal amplified without increasing the background noise. This is what masers do. Masers work by firing a source of energy, light, into a gain medium, in this case a crystal, making the electrons in the gain medium move to a higher frequency. The electron drops to a lower state, stimulating the emission of photons of light. This in turn causes the other electrons nearby to emit photons. Now our astronaut can happily call her family, and all is well. But the real problem is that masers are bulky, requiring large equipment and refrigerated rooms. But thanks to research from Imperial College and UCL, they developed a solid-state maser able to operate at room temperature. By making the maser small enough, we can integrate it with other technology and dream of new applications. Imagine the possibilities. The Random Revolution Random numbers are surprisingly important in our daily lives. They are used in gaming and the lottery, but also to make unique serial numbers for pharmaceuticals. They underpin the security of digital communications and are used in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. There are flaws in the way that most modern electronic devices generate random numbers, meaning that they aren't quite as random as we'd like them to be. This compromises the security of our devices, leads to electronic fraud and theft, and allows counterfeiters to produce fake goods. As our lives become more dependent on digital services, the scale of this problem is only increasing. Researchers at Lancaster University in Quantum Base have invented a simple solution to this problem. It uses quantum physics to generate numbers that are truly random. The underlying behavior of quantum physics is totally governed by chance. Our random number generator harnesses this. In our simple electronic device, electrons can travel through a diode via one of two different paths. We look to see which path was chosen by measuring the voltage across the diode and then convert this into a random number. The excitement in our solution lies in its simplicity. The diodes we use can be incorporated into the semiconductor chips in smartphones or any other modern electronic device. This technology fixes a big problem in cybersecurity and digital counterfeiting, helping to make the world a safer place. Please visit quantumbase.com for more information. Quantum information is the science that exploits the laws of quantum mechanics to enhance our communication and computational capabilities. Future quantum devices will allow to perform complex tasks not accessible to classical computers and fundamentally secure transfer of encrypted information. At the University of Sheffield, a team of researchers is working to develop a computer processing unit combining the quantum nature of light and novel semiconductor technologies. The foundation of this technological step change is the quantum bit, or qubit, as the unit of quantum information is known. While a classical bit can only be either 0 or 1, a qubit can be 0 and 1 at the same time, and is said to be in a superposition state of the two. The 1 and the 0 of the qubit can be represented by the spin-up and spin-down states of an electron in a wire or by the spin states of the nucleus in an atom, or by the polarization state of a photon. 
The main advantage of qubits, with respect to classical bits, can be understood by visualizing the computation as a journey from A to B in a complex landscape. A classical bit must stick to the roads representing the classical values 0 and 1. 0 1 Qubits, however, are a superposition of 0 and 1 and can therefore take a shortcut through the computational landscape. For this reason, the computation requires fewer steps and can therefore be faster. Among all the different physical systems which can be used as qubits, photons have the advantage that after having performed a calculation, they can also share the result at the speed of light, allowing fast and long distance communications. For these reasons, researchers at the University of Sheffield are developing new photonic devices combining different chemical elements such as gallium, arsenic, aluminium and indium. These materials, called 3-5 semiconductors, are particularly suitable for photon manipulation and are processed in the advanced laboratories of the National Centre for 3-5 Technologies. The simplest possible quantum circuit with photons requires three key components sources of single identical photons, a beam splitter, and single photon counters. Single photon sources are implemented using quantum dots, nanostructures able to trap one electron and one hole. When the electron falls into the hole, a photon is emitted. Trains of identical photons can be obtained by repeating this recombination process in a controllable way. The beam splitter is implemented using two wires that guide photons close together, allowing them to interfere. In this way, taking advantage of the hong o mandel effect, several different logical operations can be performed. Single photon counters are implemented by means of superconducting nanowires. These devices are so sensitive that they are able to detect a small change in the electric current caused by the arrival of a photon. In this way, it is possible to count how many photons arrive from each arm of the beam splitter and read out the result of the operation. These three components integrated together constitute the core of a scalable platform for a quantum chip based on light. Such a platform, not dissimilar to present electronic circuits, offers extraordinary computational possibilities and can also be used as a node to securely distribute encrypted information over long distances. Photosynthesis is the most important energy conversion process on our planet. Plants and algae use sunlight, carbon dioxide and water to produce 118 billion tons of biomass per year. Photosynthesis is the most powerful invention of nature. Almost every organism relies on it and without it we wouldn't be able to eat breathe and live. It is no surprising then that scientists have been investigating nature to understand the strategies it uses to convert solar energy. The key to photosynthesis lies deep in the cell membrane at the nanometer scale where we find the molecular machinery for light harvesting where quantum mechanics rules. At University College London, we are fascinated by the microscopic principles of energy flow at this tiny scale. So we've been developing theories to explain how quantum phenomena provide unique strategies for energy conversion. In all photosynthetic organisms, 
Photosynthesis begins with tiny particles of light called photons colliding with specialized antenna. Here, several chlorophyll molecules cooperate to put in practice the quantum superposition principle. Energy is shared by all the chlorophylls at once. In this way, an antenna can absorb not only more photons, but different color photons than a single chlorophyll on its own. This new form of shared energy is called an exiton and is transferred within and between antenna to reach a reaction center. There, it is converted into stable chemical energy to create biomass. In dim light, unlike this rare British summertime, this energy conversion process is extremely efficient. Almost every single photon absorbed contributes to chemical energy. We are trying to understand how, over millions of years, plants have evolved to make the most, to exploit a variety of different vibrational motions which help transfer the energy of an exiton. Our team is investigating the effects of both coherent and noisy vibrational motions in the energy flow. We and other scientists have found that nature's strategy is actually combining these two types of motion. Coherent vibrational motions keep chlorophyll synchronised as energy is redistributed around the antenna. But in contrast, noisy vibrational motions make energy transfer totally random. Neither of these two processes alone are ideal, so we need a combination of both of these for efficient energy transfer. At UCL, we have also shown that the unique quantum tricks nature puts on show rely precisely on this powerful combination. Through more than 3.5 billion years of evolution, plants, algae and some bacteria that do photosynthesis have learned to exploit quantum mechanical phenomena much better than us. Using genetic techniques, biologists can create new types of antenna to help unravel how nature might alter these quantum properties, taking a step closer to understand the quantum processes of life on Earth. Using modern techniques, molecular biologists can now specifically change the structure of light harvesting complexes and investigate systematically how those changes in structure affect the quantum behavior. In light harvesting in photosynthesis, we wish to understand how quantum effects affect the efficiency of light harvesting in the natural system so we can capitalize on that knowledge to produce a blueprint for making much better solar cells. By investigating these quantum secrets of photosynthesis, we also hope to inspire the development of a new generation of sustainable solar energy technologies, lessening our reliance on fossil fuels. <laughs>